Hi, uh, welcome back. So now we'll look at how to speed up things at uh, inference time, right? So, so now if you look at the uh, naive implementation of the autoregressive inference that we do, right? What is the autoregressive inference? So your model has been trained and now you want to start generating some output. So you start with the start token at time step equal to zero. Then you pick up the embedding of this token. Then you do the uh, key value and query transformations, right? So you get the query Q1, key K1 and value V1 for this particular token, right? And then you do this throughout the transformer layers and finally predict something at the output. Let's say in this case, you predict the word I, right? Now at time step two, you have start comma I. So these two inputs are available to you. And now you want to predict what is the next word going to be. And now again, you would do the same operations. You will compute Q1, Q2, right, by doing these uh, transformations. Uh, then you will compute K1, K2, and then you will compute V1, V2. And now the new representation for H0 and H1 uh, would be computed by using the attention equations, right? But, uh, and then you will predict the next word, let's say like. Now you come to time step three. Again, you do the same thing. You have start comma I comma like, so you compute Q1, Q2, Q3, K1, K2, K3, V1, V2, V3. And once these three Q, K, V matrices have been computed, use the attention equation to compute refined representations for these words. And then you pass, do this at every layer of the network and finally predict copy, right? And already it should uh, be obvious to you that some optimization can be done here, right? So uh, what is that optimization? So H0 was just the embedding that you picked up from the embedding matrix, right? So nothing has changed now because this is inference time, right? you're no longer training, right? And now you're going to multiply by these three matrices. These three matrices are also fixed now because these are the parameters of the model. You're not changing the parameters of the model any one. So H0 multiplied by these three is going to give you Q1, K1, V1, right? But the same thing you did at this time step also. Why do you need to repeat that computation again, right? You're just repeating it. And at time step three, even worse, Q1, K, Q2, K1, K2, V1, V2 were already computed in the previous time step. In fact, Q1 was already computed twice, once in the zero time step, then in the one at time step. So why do you need to compute them, right? So that's uh, the uh, th that's the part that we're going to optimize now. The simple idea, of course, is to just cache, right? Can you cache all the KV values? Uh, so in the first time step, we start with a query, which is Q1. Right? So we get the query vector needs to be computed because that is the one which is being fed, right? So I predicted I, now for my next time step, I becomes the query, right? So that has to be computed. Um, so now first, the at the time step zero, you computed start, uh, it's Q, K and V, all three have been computed. So store the key value in the cache, right? And you can usually do this in the GPU RAM, which is high bandwidth memory, HPM means high bandwidth memory. Memory. Now for the new query Q2 in time step 2, we will reload K1, V1 from the high bandwidth memory and compute only K2, V2. You don't need to compute Q1 anyways because that's already uh, given to you. You are currently for interested in uh, Q2, right? So we will not uh, compute uh, K1 and V1. We will just pick it up from the cache. But K2 we will compute and V2 we will compute, right? And Q1, as I said, is not needed here because now you're trying to compute a new representation for uh, Q2. And again, at time step three, uh, you're going to uh, not compute K1, V1, K2, V2. You'll just load them from the cache. So the dark orange guys are coming from the cache and only the light orange guys are getting uh, computed here. Orange or yellow, I can't see it properly. Um, and this way, right, we trade the uh, of the memory for compute and the compute scales linearly, right, because now earlier at time step one, you are computing one key, one value. At time step two, you are computing two keys, two values. Time step three, you are computing three keys, three values, right. So one plus two plus three. So this is like a summation of at time step n, you would have order n square computes to uh, computations that you would have done. But now at every time step, you're doing only one computation. For that time step, you're computing the key and the value. So that is all you need to do. Uh, so this uh, reduces the computational complexity, but of course it increases the memory requirement, right? Uh, so you can't keep, have if you have a very, very long sequence, you can't keep doing this because at some point your cache will get exhausted, right? So let's see what we mean by that. So, <coughs> so this is the, uh, 
storage requirement that we are trying to calculate. So for the KV cache, for a given token, we are trying to find the storage requirement in bytes. So you have the number of layers, right? For every layer, you want to compute the key and the value. That's where the two is coming from. This you need to do for every head, right? And uh, the number of, I mean, units that you are storing is equal to the dimension of the head, right? Because every key is going to get, have that many dimensions. And every dimension is going to be represented by uh, the precision that you have used, whether you are using a 4 byte uh, precision, 8 byte precision, or what, whatever is your choice, right? So now in say like a model like GPT-3 where the number of layers is 96, the number of heads is 96, the dimension of the head is 128 and you are choosing a 4 byte uh, precision, right? So in that case, you would have uh, the number of uh, KV cache, the amount of KV cache that you need for one token is going to be given by this this number, right? So for that token, uh, you need to store two values for each of the 96 heads and each of the 96 layers and the for each head, you are storing 128 values because the representation, the dimension size is 128 and each of these values is going to take four bytes, right? So that's how the computation is done. So you get 9.4 uh, MB for just one token, right? And But remember our sequence length typically was 512 or 1024. So this is for one token. Now if you have a context length of 2048 or 2K context length, then this will get multiplied by 2048. So you just need 19.3 GB of memory, right? And this is like GPU RAM that we're talking about. Uh, just for storing the KV cache, right? And that's uh, sort of uh, a big requirement because even if you look at a fairly modern GPU like a A100 40 GP, uh, GPU, of course there are A180 GBs, now you have H100, but A140 GB I would still at this, at this point 2024, I would still think of it as a fairly modern GPU, right? It's expensive to get this GPU. Yeah, so even on a A140 GB GPU, you would run out of uh, memory. So then one option is to drop the keys and values from the cache, right? Some of them you can drop and recompute. The other option is to do some sort of uh, modifications in the model, right? So here's one option. Uh, if you look at this formula here, right? Now I could select any one of these terms which are in the product. And if I suppose reduce that, then of course the left hand side would reduce. That means the amount of uh, memory required per token will reduce, right? But now what do you reduce? So suppose I set the number of heads to one. Does that mean that I'm going to just have one head uh, in the self-attention mechanism? No, it doesn't mean that, at least in this context. In this context, what we mean is that uh, you're doing two vectors uh, per for each head, right? So uh, you have two vectors, one for the K and one for the V for each of these heads. So what if we just access one key value pair for all the heads, right? So what does that mean? So it simply means that you share the key value pairs across the heads, which in turn means that your weight matrices for computing the K and V are shared across the heads, right? You just compute them using one mat weight matrix and then you just use them, right? Now we are talking about inference time, right? So you have suddenly decided that I had these uh, uh, separate weight matrices for computing the K matrix and the V matrix for each of the heads. Now you have suddenly decided that I'm just going to keep uh, one weight matrix, right? So because then I'm just going to compute one key value pair across all the heads and just store that, right? So instead of storing the key value pairs for all the heads, I'm just going to store it once for one head and use it the same across all the heads, right? That's what uh, you're doing here. So this of course would re lead to a significant performance uh, degradation, right? And also it would require you to retrain the network with at least 5% of the training data. So some retraining will have to be done. Otherwise this won't work, right? I mean suddenly because at training time you are using uh, separate key values for each of the heads. Now at test time you have suddenly decided I'll only compute this once, right? So let's just understand what is happening here carefully. So this is one head which had its own WQ, WK, WV. Right? And suppose you had this H0, H1. Let's just take, there are two terms. You're passing it through this. So it was computing some uh, V0, uh, uh, V1, K0, 
k1 right this was for the first head now similarly you had the second head and again you were passing h0 h1 to it right but this guy had its own w prime q w prime k and w prime uh, v right it had different weight matrices so whatever v0 k0 v1 k1 it was computing let's call that prime v1 prime k1 prime this was different for the second head right but now you are just saying that i'm just going to compute it once using any of the heads and use the same value for all the heads right so that's the difference you are bringing that is what will lead to this degradation and now if you want to do that you better retrain the network for some steps with this new configuration where the values and the keys are going to be shared across all the heads right so this is what is multi query attention this was earlier we are looking at it in the context of inference but now what it uh, what makes sense given the utility of this idea uh, is to just train the network that way right why not have this idea at train time itself this is your regular multi head attention this is your uh, uh, single uh, sharing of key and value pairs right what you could do is you could share so here all the heads were sharing their uh, keys and values but now what you could have is you could have groups of heads so the first two heads are going to share their keys and values uh, the second two heads are going to share their keys and values right so that just means that earlier you had w1q w2k sorry w1k w1v right these were your weight matrices all the way up to w suppose you had eight heads here so w8q w8k and w8 v right you had these eight different matrices now you are saying that the first two guys are going to share the same weight matrices for the key and the uh, value the next two guys are going to share the same weight matrix and this is known as grouped query attention so this of course gives you speed up both at train time and test time and it also reduces the memory of the kb cache because you are now storing fewer values for every two heads you are just storing one key and one value and the, of course the larger the group sizes the better uh, would uh, the uh, speed up be right and but it could because you are <coughs> now going to reduce the number of parameters instead of having eight different sets of matrices now in this case with groups of two you are going to have only four different sets of matrices so the number of parameters decreases but in most uh, modern llms you use some sort of grouping right so that your inference costs are also lower later on at deployment type and even during training time you get some speed up right so that's what uh, these three uh, different types of attentions are the regular multi head attention where every um, head has its own key and values the group query attention where some heads share their key, key and value and the uh, multi uh, query attention where all the uh, groups or, or all the heads share their keys and values right now one last bit of uh, optimization uh, again uh, and then you are done with this lecture is the use of uh, paged attention so now when you are using the kv cache as is always the case with the cache you will have some fixed and contiguous memory for that now what is this memory this memory will depend on the context length right because how much memory do you need for the kv cache it depends on the number of tokens you have for every token you are going to store the k and v values so larger the number of tokens the larger the kv cache you require right? so you will reserve this memory and then sort of uh, start your processing right but now what if the model is not really generating so you have said my context length is 2048 but now for a given uh, input what if your model is generating much fewer tokens right so here is an example this was <coughs> the uh, input given to me right so and i am supposed to complete this sentence so these are seven tokens so i have sh stored some 7 kb uh, cache states for these tokens now the model started generating so i kept storing the kb values but after four tokens it stopped right i mean there's nothing more to say here in the sense that the model has done its job of generation it's over now right but still there are these 2038 slots which were reserved for the kv cache and now they are no longer being used so this memory is going to get wasted right and now here you do the standard solution which uh, you we do in uh, which you would have come across in um, operating systems um so you don't block a contiguous memory uh, location what you do is paged attention 
So you want to reserve 2048 slots. You don't reserve them continuously. You reserve them in blocks of four or whatever is your appropriate block size. So now you're not blocking a continuous uh, block of memory. You're blocking uh, smaller blocks of memory. And now if these white spaces are not used. They are available for use by others because they have not been uh, reserved, right? So that's, uh, that's the advantage of using this paged attention. Okay, so that's all I have for all the different attention mechanisms that we had. These are some of the tricks which are important or architectural changes, right? Not just tricks, because when you're using sparse attention, block attention, you're making an architectural change. And later on, even when you're using group query attention, you're making an architectural change. So all of these are important for modern large scale models to make sure that the computational complexity sort of doesn't overwhelm you or it does not take a lot of compute to do these uh, computations. So you're trying to reduce that time complexity and also in the memory complexity, right? Uh, and different LLMs would use uh, different things that we have studied them. Some also use combination of the things that we have uh, studied today. Uh, so that's all I had for this lecture. I'll stop here. And the next thing that we want to look at is uh, different types of positional embeddings. So we'll look at that next week. Thank you.